For the past few days, we've gotten to experience the Battlefield 2042 beta, and as a fan of the series, I've got a lot to say. Before I get into it, I should remind that this is a beta, so when I complain about the bugs, which I'm gonna do, don't look too much into it. When the game actually comes out, hopefully things will be changed and fixed. So, starting off with the beta, you can only play Conquest and only on one map. Every time I load into a game, the UI, which is already not very good, is bugged and I can't change my operator or weapons or anything. And then when it actually works, it's not good. You can't put attachments on guns before deployment, you have to do it in-game, and then if you die and respawn, the attachments aren't on your guns. And I've had my loadouts go back to the starting loadout when I go into new games. And on that subject, there's the actual weapons. It looks like there's only four weapons for each category, which better not be the case for the actual game, and there better be more attachments than what you can put on your guns currently, and I don't want the attachments just given to me. In Battlefield 4, you'd unlock a gun, which there were a lot of those, and then you'd have to use the gun to level up with it to unlock attachments, and there were a lot of attachments in Battlefield 4. Again, maybe they only used a certain amount of guns and attachments for the beta, we don't know how different this is from the actual game. Now once you've actually deployed and are in the actual gameplay, there's still some more problems. I had some lag problems, as you'll probably notice in the footage, and there was this one bug where I would walk really slow, and when I turned, the camera zoomed out. Guns are a bit weird, like mentioned before, you have to put attachments on in-game, but often I found myself running out of ammo thought the issue was that you just spawn in with little ammo, but it turns out you have multiple ammo types, which I think is just unnecessary. Throwing a grenade is different, instead of just pressing a button and throwing the grenade, you equip a grenade and throw. I don't think that's necessary. Parachuting is quite different in this game compared to other battlefields. It feels exactly like Call of Duty Warzone parachuting, and then I've pressed space to pull out my parachute before and my guy just doesn't do it, and I just hit the ground and die. Meleeing enemies has also been changed. One of my favorite things in the earlier Battlefield games was when you'd sneak up behind someone like a sniper and melee them. You'd get a cool animation and take their dog tags. In 2042, you hit the melee button and your character punches. You have to hold the melee button to pull out your knife now, which I don't like. But I was determined to get a melee kill. I mean, it's a Battlefield game. I wanted to see the animations as well. It was difficult, I mean I was running into gunfights with a knife, but eventually I got it. And, well, besides the fact that it bugged and my character was slicing the air, it's in third person and my character didn't grab the dog tags, which was shown in the reveal trailer. Besides all that, I got to use a grappling hook, which is kinda cool. That added with the zip lines reminded me of the old Battlefield Hardline days. The controls for air vehicles on keyboard and mouse suck, but to be fair, so did they in Battlefield 4. Then, there's the actual map you're playing on. It's big and open, with two tall towers and hills. Everybody is so spread out while playing that usually when you're shooting someone, you're shooting at someone far away. This is not a good map to represent the game. The map encourages the most annoying play styles in Battlefield, sniping and staying in a vehicle like a tank or helicopter the entire game. Having a huge map doesn't mean the map is good. Did DICE forget about the absolute masterpiece that is Operation Locker from Battlefield 4? The map has environmental events that can happen like nuke launching, but it doesn't really change anything. Again, compare that to Battlefield 4. Siege of Shanghai, the skyscraper would fall down. There is one cool thing that can happen on the map. I was standing on top of the nuke tower, and I saw it. A tornado. So, you know, naturally, I jumped off the building and headed straight for it. I got in a car and drove straight at it. Tornado lifted me into the air, spinning me around, and then I was later in a jet that flew straight into it. So, yeah, I'll admit, those are pretty cool. But now, it's time to talk about the specialist system. Instead of classes like in Battlefield 3, 4, and 5, you have specialists. They each have a unique gadget like grappling hook, drone, sentry gun, and medic gun. I prefer the class system over the specialist system, but I understand why they made it. In Battlefield 5, the classes sucked. There were no guns shared between classes. Assault had the best weapons. If you wanted to play medic, you could only use SMGs. In Battlefield 4, there were certain groups of guns shared between classes. So the specialist system was made to remove the class issue of Battlefield 5, which people complained about, but it's not as good as the classes in Battlefield 4. But the specialist system has made another issue. Seeing as players on both teams are using the same specialists, it's difficult to tell enemies apart from friendlies. 
I've shot friendlies thinking they were enemies or not shot enemies thinking they were friendlies. But this is a new thing and we'll probably have to wait for the full release to tell if this is an improvement on the class system. By now, I'm sure you've noticed I've mentioned Battlefield 4 a lot. The reason for that is because it's a great game. Everything works so well in Battlefield 4 and it felt like 2042 was going to be like Battlefield 4 inside the world of Black Ops 2. But I'm worried for the actual game. The map sizes could be too ambitious, the specialist system may not work very well, and parts feel oddly similar to Call of Duty. And yet, who knows how much the beta will be like the finished project. My final opinion is, I don't know. It may take time to really get a feel for this game. One thing I'm certain about is they need to fix the bugs. I hope game developers and game fans have learned a lesson from Cyberpunk and are fine with delays. If DICE needs to delay, they should. But we don't know just how much of EA being EA is going on with this game. I would love to be proven wrong. I want this game to be good. That's all. If you'd like to add something or disagree, feel free to tell me in the comments. And lastly, where is the EOD bot?